Renewable hydrogen is a replacement for fossil fuels. For example, replacing chemicals in certain reactions like for steel making or for producing ammonia that you need it as a raw material, feedstock, or you need it for long-term storage of the electricity system or for district heating. Those are important applications. If you produce it, you need electricity, renewable electricity to produce the hydrogen and you also need electrolyzers. Producing it means you need a lot of electricity and it's expensive. Both of that are important features. Green hydrogen needs to be reserved to those applications for which we have no cleaner or more energy efficient alternative. For example, European industry, 40% of the fossil gas that it consumes is used to produce heat of less than 100 degrees Celsius. Now, the better alternative to this that is cheaper and more effective in terms of carbon and decarbonization is a heat pump. Producing green hydrogen means that we need a lot of additional renewable electricity to produce the hydrogen. And this will need a lot of wind and solar. And we have the potential for that in Europe. Now, some specific industry applications like steel, ammonia, chemicals, plastics, methanol, they truly need green hydrogen to become climate neutral. And that's where the green hydrogen needs to go, that those are no regret applications. And when we lay that out over Europe and think, where are those sites? Then we see an emerging European hydrogen network. And in the early phase, we can see four corridors, one in Central Western Europe, one in Eastern Europe, one in Southeastern Europe, and one in Spain. And this together is the early hydrogen network, and those are early, no regret hydrogen investment opportunities for the hydrogen economy. The cost of renewable hydrogen need to come down, especially the cost of electrolyzer systems. That means we need an upscaling, and we need to have learning by doing effects. And then manufacturers of those systems need to have predictable and stable demand in order to improve their operations and, and have bigger operations and manufacturing capacities. And finally, until CO2 prices are high enough, we need an additional incentive to incentivize the use of hydrogen in Europe. And that means we need additional policy support instruments. First of all, sustainability criteria are absolutely essential. And the same is true for the system integration of electrolyzers. And for infrastructure development, we need some initial financial support. For ramping up the market for green hydrogen and target those applications where hydrogen is really needed and a no regret option, we need to have policy support instruments. And those are carbon contracts for difference in industry, a quota in aviation, auctions for supporting combined heat and power plants, mechanisms for developing low carbon materials, and finally, hydrogen supply contracts. The European Commission's Fit for 55 policy package is a great opportunity to put us on the right track with the revision of the third energy package for gas, with the Renewable Energy Directive, and with the hydrogen strategy. With all this legislation, our focus now needs to be on no-regret hydrogen applications and the necessary infrastructure.